Hello, Marcel here to show you how to use different shaders for different individual hair strands and feathers on your character in Ornatrix for Maya. To do this, I'm going to put some feathers on this guy over here. And to demonstrate the scattering of different shaders on this character, I'm just going to have different feather textures and shaders applied on different parts of this character's body. So to start, I'm just going to select this mesh and as always, I'm going to add a groom. And in this case, I'll use the default feather groom because it sets up our modifier stack to contain feathers initially. Make it a little bit more neat by modifying the length and the thickness of my feathers and you can see that they are pretty uniformly distributed so the overall structure of the strands is more feather-like instead of hair-like. I'm just going to go into the surface comb node and quickly use the sinks editing tool to modify the sinks so I'm just going to change the directions of the strands on different parts of the character's body so maybe on the ears the hairs will point up and on the wings they will go down and on the toes they will go out. I'm also going to go into hair from guides node and in here I will change the distribution parameter to have a map controller distribution and I think this will do for now. In this tutorial all we're trying to do is to see how to create feathers and not necessarily create anything super realistic. So next thing I will do is add a new edit guides shape right above my guides from mesh node so we can define the strand groups which will specify parts on our character that will have different shaders applied to them. So I'm just going to go into root mode and inside the channels drop down I'm going to add a new channel called groups. It is very important to call this groups with a capital G because it is name sensitive and it will specify the strand groups for our strands. I'm going to select all of my strands here and just assign them all a group of one and then I'm going to isolate just the ears and the wings of this character. So I'm going to select first ear and I'm going to assign it a group two. So group two is going to be my ear group. And I'm going to select the second ear and also assign it to group 2. Then I will go in and do the same thing for the wings. But here I'm going to assign a group number of 3. And I will do the same thing on the opposite side of the character. For the other wing, I'm also going to explicitly specify the group number 3. So at this point, we have our character separated into three strand groups. We have our main body group, which is number 1, our ears group number 2, and our wings, which are group number 3. Now we can go into the render settings node and change the strand group to some other value for example one the group of zero meant that this render settings node applied to all of these strands on the character and changing its strand group to one makes sure that it only applies to the body of our character which we marked using the group one so as I change the radius of this you can see now that this only applies to the body feathers this way I can actually change the feather mesh and it will just affect the feather shape on the body of this character so once I'm happy with what I have I can add another render settings node and this time I will set its strand group number to number two and this will just affect the ears you can see that it made them pointy because our diagram over here tapers the length of the feathers down towards their tip and we don't actually have to make the feather shape because we will be using textures for feathers we can just leave them as flat planes so this render settings node are really just for controlling the width of our feathers I'm just gonna finally add a final render settings node over here and I'm gonna set its group to three and this will control the feathers on our wings. Again, I'm just going to make this a flat shape. We don't really have to have a feather shape. And now once we have customized the shape, we can go and assign the shaders to our feathers. Let me just first create three planes and each one of these planes is going to act as a little preview for me and it's going to be a little sampler that has the shader assigned to it. So I'm going to copy the plane that I created two more times and each one of these planes is going to have its own shader. Right click on the first one, assign favorite material Lambert and I'm going to repeat the step for the other two just so we have this separate Lambert material for each one of these planes and I'm just going to at first change the color so we can differentiate these three materials between each other I'm going to make this one green I'm going to make this one red and then I'm going to make this one blue so we have Lambert 2 material, Lambert 3, and then we have finally Lambert 4. We need to remember these names as we go back into our hairs and we use the mesh from strands node and scroll down to the shader list group. And in here we have a button called add new item. This item allows us to specify the name of the shader that we want to use. Once I add the three shaders, you can see that the hair turns green, meaning that there are no shaders currently assigned to it. And we can start populating this list with the shaders that we created. So first one was Lambert 
2. And now you see as I do this, all of the hairs become green, which is the same color as our first shader. Then I will do the same thing for Lambert 3. And then finally, I'll do the Lambert for shader in the last slot. As I do this, you can see that we are now randomly spreading these three materials over all of the strands on our character. And this is the default option that we can use. In fact, in many cases, when you have a feathered character, it could be good to have three different feather textures that have slight variations that go over the surface of your character. But for this tutorial, we want to separate our ears from the wings and our body. So I'm going to use the scatter channel. And in here, I will select the groups channel that we have created. Once I do this, you can see that we have our body as green and then we have the wing feathers as blue and then the ears are red. There is a little bit of spillover over here and this is due to the interpolation of the hairs in the character, but we will not worry about this too much at the moment. So the final step is to actually apply our feather textures. I'm going to go into this first Lambert material and I'm going to go into the color map and assign a new file map. And inside this file map, I will just use a transparent feather texture, which I have previously created. Let's see. So I'm going to use this medium texture over here. It has an alpha map. And then for the second one, I'm also going to use a color map and I'm just going to select a different texture for this one, this really short feather over here. And then for the final one, I'm going to do the same thing and select a different feather texture. So you can see we have three different textures over here. Right now the textures are not showing because the UV coordinates are being spread out all over the mesh. And what we need to do is to tell Ornatrix to treat each one of these planes as its own little UV space. So I can use this per strand coordinate button to turn this on. And when I do this, you can see that all of a sudden, now we get a feather displayed on every single plane that we get generated. I'm just gonna go and bump up the number of our hairs. And then I will also to increase the length of the feathers. And when I do this, our character all of a sudden becomes a little bit more interesting and slightly more realistic despite that he is all cartoony and underneath he has a purple color. If you remember, inside the render settings node for the wings and the ears, we had flat planes. And in here, we actually defined the different shape of our strand to be a little bit more like a feather. And Ornatrix will automatically generate the UV coordinates to fit the feather shape for each single strip that defines your feather strand. For example, I can go to the surrender settings node and use the diagram to modify its shape to look a little bit more like feather. And this is actually changing the ear texture. And as I do this, let me just zoom in on one of the feathers. For example, this one, you can see as I change the bottom, it is calling the feather texture and creating something almost like a mask for it. And they can go around my feather and remove the parts that I don't want for it and maybe keep the other parts that I do want to stay. And the feather texture will be preserved and applied correctly by Ornatrix. So now these are no longer planes and instead this is actually a geometry that defines a feather shape and follows it a little bit more closely. So if you want to do that for your character, you can use the render settings node just for this purpose. And as always, we can go back into our modifier stack and continue modifications of our character. We can, for example, change the angle of our feathers and zero angle, of course, means that all of the feathers will be facing the character. We can use the surface comb node to change the orientation of the feathers relative to the surface. So I can make my feathers a little bit closer to the character's surface or further away from it. You get all of these controls to change the look that you're going for. So this tutorial was to show how to change the individual shaders that you can use for specific strands on your character, or if you just want to scatter one or more shaders all over the character randomly. I hope you can use it to your advantage to create feathers or even a character that has hair that uses different materials on its head. Thank you very much for watching.